All right, we're back with Mike Sealski uh, to talk a little bit about his time covering Allen Iverson for various publications in and near the Philadelphia area. Um, you know, I actually had the pleasure when he, he first got released. I'm from the D.C. area. I saw him play and actually got to play against him in uh, some of those summer league games in the Jabbo Kenner League. And I saw his first game against Fort Hood, the exhibition game in McDonough. And I, I can tell you, I've never seen a city so electrified as it was the news when Allen Iverson came. And he's just truly, truly a, a singular athlete in the history of sports. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. Um, he was so much fun to cover. He was interesting every time you were around him, no matter what was going on. Um, you know, so smart, like not given enough credit for how just a smart individual he was, naturally intelligent. Um, and just that, that like, it, it was, his time in Philly was so weird because I think people thought that he could be better than he was, right? Like, why isn't he working out more, right? Why isn't he practicing, you know, the whole practice ran, all that stuff. But you watched him on the court, and it was like, I can't believe I'm watching this guy do this, knowing that he just showed up at the arena after, like, having dinner at 5.30 at a hula hands on City Avenue or something like that, that he just rolled into the arena, put his sneakers on, and dropped 39 on the Pistons in the playoffs. It was amazing, and it was he was just... He was the best to cover. He really was. You know, whether things were going well or things were not going well, it was all action all the time with AI. Well, with that being said, you just released your uh, excellent debut uh, basketball book, uh, The Rise of Kobe. And uh, I, I, I got to say, it's it's definitely one of the best sports debuts I've ever read. And it's probably in my top sh short short list of, of best basketball books I've read. Do you ever have plans ever, ever writing a book on, on Allen Iverson? Uh, first, thanks for that. And uh, to answer your question, probably probably no. A friend of mine named Kent Babb, who writes for the Washington Post. I got it. Few, yeah, a few, few years ago did a great book about Allen. Um, really was revealing. It, it, the answer, right? No, it was the one that Larry Platt did, I think. Um, I, 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 I got the Allen that, one. I could walk over there right now and get it, but I'd have to go off camera. Yeah. I got that um, one. The one that, um, uh, that Kent did is called uh, Not a Game. And uh, it's all about Allen adjusting to life after basketball, and it's really good. And I, I couldn't do a book on Allen that would be better than the one he did. So I'm looking around for other topics, and we'll see what comes around. But I'm definitely interested in, in doing another basketball book. Got you. Do you remember the first time you met Allen Iverson? Yeah. Um, I was in a press conference with him um, during the 2000 playoffs um, when the Sixers were playing the Pacers, the Indiana Pacers in the second round. And uh, I covered some of that series and talked to Alan in a press conference, like a lot of people. And then, you you know, the following years, you'd go to practice. He'd talk, talk to him after a game. We'd all crowd around his locker. Um, you know, just became – I was one of the scenery, you know, to him. You know, one of the, the dozen or so or even two dozen people who were around him a lot during his time at the Sixers. You know, do you think those people covered him fair, unfair, too fair? Because, you know, some I think, people I think most – yeah, I think most of the people in Philly did cover him fairly. Now, were the, there were some people who didn't, who were clearly out to get him a little bit. Um, but I think most of the writers who were around him a lot, um, if you know the name Phil Jasner, for instance, from the Philadelphia Daily News, who was the longtime Sixers beat writer for the Daily News, he and Alan got, got along pretty well. They respected each other. Um, Ashley Fox, who covered the, the Sixers for the Inquirer back then, you know, Stephen A. Smith, they were all very fair, I thought, to Allen. You had to report the not-so-great stuff, but you also wrote about the incredible stuff that he did on the court. Got you. Who do you think is a better rapper, him or Kobe? Oh, he, Allen. Allen, I, I think. Uh, um, did you ever sit near Ann Iverson during a game? I did not. I did not. I was, yeah, you could always find her, though. She was behind one of the baskets, and uh, she was loud, and she was very proud of her son. I mean, as she should have been, as she should yeah, have been. Yeah, darn right. What, what, what's an uh, underrated memorable moment? Like maybe he did like some incredible steal and dunk in, in, in like a meaningless February game, like, like just something you remember that was. There's two. There's one. I was there the night he dropped 60 against the Orlando Magic, which was his career high. And that was incredible. And that was just a middling, you know, midseason game. But there's a game against the Wizards. Um where they beat the Wizards at the end. The, the game was tied. The Wizards are inbounding the ball 
with a chance to win the game with like three seconds left. And Allen steals the inbounds pass and goes the length of the floor. And it's just something that you don't really even think of in situations like that. You know, you know, you, you would just assume the team that's inbounding the ball is going to get the last shot. And I'm looking at you now and you look bummed out by this. <laughs> you either lost money on this game or you're a Wizards fan or something. I'm, 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 a, hu- I'm a huge Wizards fan. I, I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. Vividly. Yeah. I'm sorry to bring up such a painful memory, Mark. I'm it's sorry. always against the Wizards. I, I thought I thought <laughs> the only thing worse if you could have been like, well, I remember this one time he crossed Antonio Daniels ba- so bad he fell. Oh no! If we're going to talk crossovers, you got to talk about the one against Jordan and and I and Allen's rookie year. I mean that once he did that, everybody knew. Oh my gosh! You know we've got something special with this kid. You remember Al Dillard on Arkansas? Yeah, I remember the name. Yeah. Man, his first game against Arkansas, there was I can't remember homeboy's name, but he took like Al Dillard's place as like the little shooter off the bench, and it was it was it was Allen Iverson's very first game that counted. And, and man, he 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 crossed dudes so ridiculously. You all know how audacious Allen Iverson was. His first game against the defending champs, they still got Corliss Williamson, and you know it's a forty minutes of hell and everything, right? Mm-hmm. He gets he blocks a dude on I can't remember who it was, but he blocked somebody on Arkansas shot. Pinned it to the backboard, one hand came down with it, and t- and turned around and tried to throw a full court bounce, one bounce pass to a cutter. It got stole at half court, and this is like I swear in like the first fifty seconds of the game. Go go back and watch the tape. You know, you know, it's funny. We're talking about Allen. We're talking about Kobe, and it's one of the things that I miss about the NBA now because analytics are great. Analytics help you understand the game better. But analytics do take some of the soul and the creativity out of the game. And you watch a guy like Allen or you watch a guy like Kobe who are taking and making shots that coaches nowadays would say, don't shoot that. That's a bad shot. That's a long two or that's too early. And, but yet it was so freaking entertaining to watch them play that something's missing in the game if you can't have guys like that. Oh, bro, they went from a jazz to an orchestra. It's a homo- exactly. a homogenization exactly. of it, you know. Yep, absolutely. And then uh, finally about uh, Allen Iverson, do you think he's found peace? I hope he has. I don't know. Um, but I hope he has. Um, I mean, I, you know, I, know, I know you got your ear turned to the grapevine, and I don't want to hear any bad news, but by, by, by all accounts, it seems like he's uh, been doing much better the last – Yeah, it does. It does. And, and for a I long hope, time, you know. Yeah, I hope it stays that way for his sake. I really do. Um you know, you just, you, 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 there's something about Allen, no matter what he does, that there's something about him that makes you want the best for him. And you hope that that's what comes of his life. You know, when, when, uh, in, in around, let's say like 94 to 98, I used to use my barometer on whether I thought a person was a good person or not on their opinion, on their opinion of Allen Iverson's character. Hmm. That, 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 that would tell me a lot. Yeah. It's, I mean, he's he's fascinating. He could be the stu- the subject of psychological and sociological studies from now till the end of time. Yes, sir. Well, th- thank you for your time talking about AI. All, and that, man, that'll be a pleasure for the rest of my life. Thanks for the uh, insight. Sure.